Uh, let's have a chat then about what more can be done to help clubs. I definitely do my bit, by the way. Uh, Steve Alton <laughs> is Chief Executive of the British Institution of Innkeeping and Richard Allen is director of a pub called The Swan in Windsor, which is partially owned by the local community. And we'll start with you, Steve. I mean, it's a massive question, but how has it come to this, so many pubs closing? It's, it's, I think, a sign of, unfortunately, post-pandemic. We've had some real issues and there's, there's still debt. You know, pubs have been facing chronic inflation for a couple of years as well, so 20% increases there. Energy is not normalised, unfortunately, and the national living wage increase didn't just affect entry-level roles. It was throughout pub teams as well. So they're facing a, a huge wall of cost. So conversion is the issue. I mean, many pubs are busy and, the, and you know, maybe didn't get the results on Sunday we wanted, but the, the pubs as a whole, you know, had a, those that showed the football had a fantastic time, you know, re re the, to see those scenes of, of full pubs and it wasn't just the money it was to do with people being reminded of what great places these these pubs uh, play in society to come together and celebrate some landlords that I speak to though say it's also a cultural shift in so much as people under 30 perhaps aren't drinking as much alcohol they're opting to socialize in a different way is that something we just have to accept, maybe? No, pubs have very much stepped up now. So to go into a pub, one in three visits is no longer to do with alcohol. They do great coffee, non-alcoholic and low-alcoholic uh, beers and, and soft drinks and, and new, new spirits ranges. So there's lots more reasons to go to a pub. Food, events, community clubs use pubs now as, as a place to come together that is friendly and accessible. And then they, they see the pubs are very different than a modern pub and they come back with their families later. So, no, they've very much, you know, tackled that. Out, outdoor space is frustrating with the weather. During the pandemic, they invested hugely in outdoor space and you saw some of those being used during the football as well. But let's get some sunshine and get the pubs packed again because they do offer now something that appeals to all types of customers. Let's go to the pub. Let's go to the Swan at Windsor and speak to Richard. Hi, morning, Richard. Um, your Good morning. pub has been saved partly by the community. Tell us how they've done it there. Um, yeah, so, I mean, it's been quite a long journey, but um, going back to 2015, but uh, I'm uh, the CEO of a, a charity called The Green Room, and we run alternative schools for, for young people who fall out of mainstream education. Um, and we were looking for something that is... Uh, like Steve says, more than a pub, uh, a place for our youngsters to learn and to become part of the community. Uh, and then we joined with a local brewery because we didn't know how to run a pub. So we, we, we sort of got our business plan together. And in order to do it, um, we needed to enlist the help of the community. So in 2018, we set up uh, a community interest company, which uh, I'm a director of, and about 180 people in the local area got together and just like the story that just went, um, either bought shares in the pub um, or they gave us a loan of money um, and we promised to repay that loan in twice its value over the bar within three years. So wow. uh, we managed to get, uh, it was very difficult to get a mortgage. Uh, we were turned down six or seven times, but eventually um, we did it and we managed to sort of put in a bid that um, <clears throat> took away the competition of developers and um, everything like that, and we got the keys in February 2019. Oh, in fact, well, it's our fifth birthday. Oh, soon. well, happy birthday. Yeah. <laughs> happy birthday. Thank you very and, much. And, you know, yeah. we, we're calling it, and I know you've won awards for being a community pub. What does a community pub look like compared with an, a, a regular pub? I mean, what kind of things might we expect to see going on there if we turned up? Uh, you could come to this pub any day of the week and see something different that's going on. I think that's that's one thing. It's really sort of embraced the diversity within the community. Um, we have a Warhammer group that meets here. We have a ukulele group that just started and are now gigging and touring around the town. We have a, a group that comes and does sewing, a Mahjong group, cribbage. And obviously we have pub quizzes, bingo, uh, and we have a chatty cafe that comes every Friday. So if you're feeling a bit isolated in community, you come along on a Friday and there's a table that, that is now taken over half the pub and they go on and do sponsored walks and stuff themselves. So there really is something um, different and something for everyone. And if you come on a Thursday, uh, the pub is run by our students here at the Green Room College and they take over the pub, they work in the kitchen, behind the bar, they do front of house. We've got a, a shop called the Epic Emporium, which they sell their own crafts and, and, and bits and, and produce from our allotment and stuff like that. So it really is something, uh, I, I mean, anything. If, if you're a community member and you wanted to start something here, uh, we would support you to do that. Wow. Um, 
Thank you, yeah. Richard. I think I'm uh, going to be moving to Windsor. I think um, we're struggling struggle to get a table, to be yeah, honest. Exactly. <laughs> um, Steve, finally, what would you say to somebody who's seen an abandoned building in their community that used to... Because they are fantastic buildings, some Absolutely. of them, aren't they, from the late 19th century. What would you say to someone who wanted to set up a project like this? What help is out there? Lots of help. Obviously, ourselves, you know, our purpose is to help you know, keep pubs thriving in the heart of every community. So everything that these guys have to tackle, the technical stuff, the legal, the HR, the licensing, but also how do you diversify a business? How do you appeal in the, in the brilliant way they've just talked about to get so many different people who were non-traditional pub goers and realise pub is a very different space? But there's two things. We applaud what these guys are doing. It's fantastic. And, and to breathe new life into, into empty pubs is fantastic in the, in the first place. But we need to save pubs to get, get into that state in the first place. And we have a lot of viable pubs that have been out there for decades that through no fault of their own, they're finding incredibly tough times. And government does have an opportunity to give a little bit of investment to our pubs. You know, short term, business rates relief falls away in March next year. That's a huge bill that's going to come in if we don't tackle that. So we need an early announcement from government. And just a level at the playing field on taxation. For every three pounds you give to these guys across the bar, a pound goes to the taxman. Okay. That's too much. We need to bring that down and reduce we that. We have to leave it there. Steve, Richard. Cheers. Thank you very much indeed. Good luck. It's got me right in the Cheers. mood for a little cider and a pickled egg, John. We'll do Not that till after half the programme.